Good morning, my dear students. I'm Miss Tania Poveda, and this is Entrepreneurship. Today, we're going to study something really interesting. I hope you like it. But first, do you remember what to do with this information? Yes, I know you do. Download this link or download this video, save it on your computer, cell phones, or laptops, and keep it there so you can study it anytime. In case you cannot download it or in case you cannot watch it again online for any reason, you can always take your own notes, pen or pencil on your folder or notebooks, or print the information and keep it with you. Okay, well, as you know, right now we are studying about marketing mix and marketing mix is the mix of the four pieces of marketing, product, price, place, and promotion. This is a brief description of each P, like in product, price, place, and promotion. We are studying one by one. Just to remember, what is the most important P in a marketing mix? What is the one and the first P that you must consider when talking about marketing mix? You're right, product. Do you remember what a product is? Okay. So when talking about product, we're talking about things that we need or that we want. They can be touchable or, un or untouchable. We have to consider this question when talking about the product. What solution does the customer want and need? You consider things like features, design, use, user experience, naming, branding, differentiation, etc. And also, the definition of product is something, physical or not, and I love that part, created through a process that provides benefits to a market. Right? So, knowing that, let's remember that products can be goods or services. If you can touch it, if it's something physical that you can feel, smell, see, touch, you call them goods, as we can see here in this picture on the left. As we can see here on the left, when it is something that someone else is doing for you or something that we cannot touch, like internet service or energy service, or maybe the service of a waiter, a waitress, a cashier, a taxi driver, in that case, we call them services. The, those are untouchable products. This is only a short review. You know this very, very well. I know it's not the first time we talk about that. But today we have something different and really, really important for everybody. All right. So today we are going to talk about price price. So this is the second P of marketing. The second one. All right. So let's check on the definition of price. So price is the amount of money charged for a product or service or the sum of the values that consumers exchange for the benefits of having or using the product or service. Well, so Price is a representation in money or currency for a product or a service. Every time you trade something, every time you buy something, you pay, right? It can be bills, coins, or cash, as we can see here in the picture, or sometimes it can be through electronic money. It can be a transfer, it can be um, credit card or debit card or something like that. So the amount of money that you pay for a product, touchable or untouchable, is what is considered the price. 
Got it? Okay, you probably recognize this from price. We have futures, quality, branding, packaging, services, and guarantees. So what are these? These are the things that you must consider when pricing a product, when pricing goods or services. And you're probably now thinking, okay, but what are futures or what's about quality branding? Okay, I'm going to explain that right now. So futures, as we can see here, is benefits, something extra from a product. For example, let's compare two shampoos. Both are the same. You use them to wash your, your hair, but one has different futures, probably more benefits. It's for curly hair, probably for natural color hair or things like that, right? So that's a, something that you consider for the price, the benefits of the products or the futures of the product. And believe it or not, some people like me, we like to know what's different with one product and the other, because probably you need something really specific. So you consider the futures. Got it? Okay, what about the quality? So what's important for you? The price, the quality? There are things that are really important to consider the quality. For example, food, right? Because it's going something that you're going to put into your body. So you need something that is really good quality or high quality. Let's say that you practice a sport. You need some good shoes or maybe a special equipment. In that case, you need something that lasts long time. You need something high quality. Probably there are things that you don't need to consider too much the quality. You're going to use maybe once in your life. Let's say some paper dishes, for example, or napkins. It's like you don't need a big quality on those, those things, right? Maybe a shirt that you wear only once for a party or for a bingo, that kind of things, right? So quality, it's another characteristic to consider when pricing products. This is actually my favorite one, branding. As you can see, branding comes from the word brand, the brand. Examples of brands, Nike, Coca-Cola, iPhone. No, iPhone is not a brand, Apple, Apple. Samsung, you know the name, the name of a, the name of a company or a product. What to consider in branding? Well, this is going to be a whole class later in the future, hopefully. But if we right now we can see it just uh, for a minute, you consider the value, strategies, trust, design, logo, advertising, image of the company, etc. But when pricing the product, branding. The brand is very important. Does it happen to you that you have two identical products, but then you choose the one that it's more popular? So you have two products exactly the same, but then you are like, oh, I'm going to buy this one because everybody knows the brand. Well, let me tell you, I do that. <laughs> Maybe it's not fair, but sometimes the name is important, sometimes especially with things that you are going to maybe eat or maybe perfumes or shoes, things that you need to feel really comfortable and healthy with. Okay, now we have packaging. Packaging is about the package, how you pack your product. First of all, does it need a package? Probably yes. So you must consider what kind of image you want to have if it's something like homemade or maybe something more industrial and the time and money that you invest in packaging and more important than that, the image that you want to project to the client. It is something that you must consider when pricing a product. Mm -hmm. 
So here we can see on the right, apparently it's like a product from a young entrepreneur making their own products. And on the left, we see something more like probably Amazon company, right? Packaging a lot of boxes with this tape and people working on that. So we have two different packagings here, but they are not the only ways of packaging products. We have other, we have plastic bags, we have, we have maybe um, paper bags or things like that. Okay. And well, so you have some things to consider too when talking about pricing, when talking about the guarantee. Oh, okay. When talking about the service, what kind of service can you provide with your product on your business? Probably mobile device support or security solutions or remote help desk, backup and disaster recovery, on-site support, etc. So the different services that you add to your product because you buy something and maybe you have some troubles later and you need some help. So what happened is that when you need help and you receive it and you are happy with that, of course, you're going to recommend the product because there are people behind taking care of you and your product. But if it happens the opposite, you buy something and you have some troubles and you don't get any help, any extra service, what you're going to do is to tell people, don't buy it. No, just don't because nobody is there to help you. So the service is really, really important. And then we have the guarantees. So what are the guarantees? Guarantees is what they offer behind the product. Like it's not only the product, but they tell you that it's going to last at least one year, two years, three years, five years, um, maybe industry leading guarantee or lifetime guarantee. So this is what they offer that they say that your product is going to last. If, if your product breaks or doesn't work good before the time of your guarantee, you can go and to the shop, to the store where you bought the product, talk to the sellers and find a solution showing the guarantee time. So those were characteristics that you must consider when pricing a product, right? Okay, right now, I'm going to show you something very, very interesting that probably you didn't know before. And this is the price psychology. Have you ever heard about that? Probably yes. It's a popular term that we use lately. It's how marketing, I'm going to say this, um, plays with numbers in a way that they look more affordable for people. It means that everybody can or want to buy a product, how they make the price to look more attractive. So that's the price psychology. Let's watch this video, enjoy it, and better than that, Let's learn. So next time that you go to a store, pay attention on the price. And I can tell you that there is a lot of marketing work there. There is a psychology behind that. So after this video, things are not going to be the same. Okay, are you ready? Yes, okay, let's watch this and enjoy it. Hi, in this quick video, I wanna show you five simple things in price psychology that you can use to make your prices seem more attractive. Let's get into it. Number one, ego pricing. In one crazy study, researchers were able to match prices to people's birthdays and found that it increased purchase likelihood. They offered a pasta dinner for $39, and in the description, they just told people about what that dinner would entail, 
But when it came to presenting the actual price that people would pay to get this pasta dinner, they got a little tricky. For some people, they changed the price a little bit so that it matched their birthday. So if the participant was an April 15th baby, well then, the cost of the pasta dinner would be $39.15. When it came time for them to say how likely they would be to purchase this pasta dinner, the people who saw a price with their birthday in it reported 23% greater likelihood of purchasing that product. Just because it matched their birthday. Number two, the comma effect. In another study, researchers did something really simple. They just presented people with prices that either had commas in them or not. So, for example, the price $1,342 to some people would look like this, and to other people would look like this. And the question is, does that change anything about how they perceive the price? Uh, yes, it does. It turns out that when there was a comma in the price, people perceived it as being 11% bigger relative to the non-comma price. So, keep those commas out of your prices if you want to make it look a little bit lower. Number three, the relative size effect. Let's say you wanted to discount your product. You would show people what the price used to be, and then show them what the price is now. But how do you present those prices? Well, some research has looked at whether you should make the sale price really big to draw people's attention to it, or make the sale price really small, because after all, you want people to think it's a small number relative to the original price. And what they find is that the version where it's really small is the optimal version. People report greater purchase likelihood when they present the sale price in relatively small font, because it signals people to think of it as a smaller number. Number four. Consolidated surcharges. Let's say you have a product and you have to charge an additional fee for shipping and handling and a further additional fee for tax. What do you do? Well, the research shows that rather than leave those two surcharges separate, like this, you should combine them together into one lump surcharge, even if it looks as though that surcharge is bigger. Finally, number five, high five, the descending order effect. In one study, some researchers infiltrated a bar, if only all researchers could be so lucky. And what they did is for an eight-week period in the bar, they just got them to use different beer menus every other week. On some weeks, they would list the beers on the menu in ascending order, from the least expensive beer down to the most expensive. And on other weeks, they would list the beers in the opposite order, starting with the most expensive and going down to the least expensive. And what they found is on the weeks where the beers were listed in descending order, Order, starting at the most expensive, people chose more expensive beers on average compared to the weeks where the same beers were listed in the opposite order. On average, people had spent almost 24 cents more per beer in the descending order condition compared to the ascending order condition. And over those two months, the bar sold more than a thousand bottles of beer. So that 24 cents really does add up. Okay, I'm going to stop there. And what do you think now? So yes, there is a big psychology system behind prices. So, you know, from now on, pay attention on that. Don't let them play with your brain. So you know what's going on and take the right decision when buying a product. I hope that you enjoyed that video. I actually did. I watched it twice before this class because I was like, wow, especially with the coma effect. And now that I think about myself, you know what? I don't pay attention to the coma. And actually I like prices without a coma or a dot. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I invite you to pay attention on prices next time and think about what strategy are they using with me? It's maybe about the ego strategy maybe the small numbers strategy, the coma strategy, descendant prices. Well, let me tell you something. Next time I go to a restaurant, I'm going to pay attention on the menu and see what strategy they are using. Hmm? What do you think? Well, that's it for today. But there is more about pricing, not now, because we already had a lot of information, but I'm going to prepare something really, really good for the next class about strategies and other kind of things about prices. So just wait for that. Okay, so this was the first part of pricing in marketing mix. Thank you very much for your attention. 
I hope that you like it, that you enjoy it as much as I did. Take care, everybody. Remember to stay home, wash your hands, take care of your family. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Be positive and pray. Have a good day and bye-bye.